Hi guys, welcome to building and monetizing news website with news API. This is basically an extensive project based course where you'll be fully guided step by step on how to build a news website using JavaScript programming language alongside with other supporting tools. This course is a consisted of two main aspects. The first one is the technical aspects which will train you from the perspective of web developer on how to build a fully functioning news website. Meanwhile, the second aspect is the business aspect where you learn the perspective of business. You learn multiple strategies that you can implement to monetize your news website. And the website that we will, will build is going to have news coming from more than 80,000 sources updated regularly. And it's going to be made possible by connecting the site with news API. And there's nothing you should worry about guys since you can access news API for completely free, obviously with limitations, up to 100 API requests a day. But don't worry, that's going to be more than enough for this project. The course puts heavy emphasis on user experience and comfortability. Therefore, as soon as we're done building the website, we'll be conducting testing not only to ensure the product has worked the way it is supposed to, but also evaluating whether it is easy to use and user friendly from the perspective of users. At the end of the course, you learn several monetization strategies that you can implement. For example, like displaying ads on your websites or selling subscriptions to your users for accessing premium features. Hence, hopefully by the end of the course, you will understand the potential of turning this news website to a full-time and sustainable passive income business. Since the news websites will be built using JavaScript, therefore some basic understandings will be necessary. Nonetheless, there's nothing you should worry about. If you are not really confident with your JavaScript programming skills, this course also comes with JavaScript Crash Course, which was created and designed specifically to prepare you better for the project. Hence, you'll definitely get all the basic fundamentals of JavaScript programming language that you need to know before starting the actual project. So you will be fine guys, even if you are not familiar with JavaScript. Well, we've gone this far, but I haven't introduced myself yet. Hi guys, my name is Chris and I've been creating more than 20 courses on Udemy. Previously, I worked as an IT consultant for the last couple of years before deciding to resign from my job and start running several online businesses like dropshipping, affiliate marketing and selling digital products, including selling um, online courses on Udemy. Regarding JavaScript, I've been using this programming language pretty extensively in my previous job and I also occasionally use it for my personal projects. Last but not least, I think it's very important for you to know my intention behind creating this course. Well, it's actually pretty simple guys. I'm a firm believer in the notion of practicality where the most effective way to learn is actually to learn by doing. Therefore, by building these news websites, not only that you will learn how to apply your JavaScript knowledge and skills by building a real project with real use cases, but also make you realize the business opportunities behind building websites. So yeah, guys, that was a brief introduction about myself. Um, once again, welcome to the course, and I'm looking forward to learn and work with you. So I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to talk about a table of content. So basically, I'm going to explain um, things that you're going to do, things that you're going to learn in each chapter. And as you guys can see here, in total, we have 10 chapters in this course. So hopefully by the end of this video, um, you have a general overview about things that you're going to learn in this chapter, right? So let's begin with the first one here. Whom this course is intended for? So in this chapter, we're basically going to answer this particular questions. Whom this course is intended for? So I'm gonna um, tell you the intention behind me creating this course and also type of people um, whom this course is intended for, right? So type of people who might get interested with this course or type of people who might actually need to take this course, right? The second one here is going to be tools, IDE, and API. So I'm going to explain um, tools that we're going to use, like programming language that we're going to use, um, any other libraries or extensions that we might utilize for this project. Um, also going to talk about the IDE. So just in case, if you guys don't know like what IDE is, IDE stands for uh, Integrated Development Environment. So it's basically like the place for you to write the code Right? It's kind of like the programming environment uh, for this project. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, but feel free to choose or use uh, whatever IDE that you're most comfortable with. Only because I use VS Code does not necessarily mean that 
you should also use uh, VS Code, right? If you're more comfortable with other IDE, for example, like Sublime Text, then feel free to uh, go with Sublime Text, guys. So I don't really have um, personal preference, like which IDE that you should um, use, right? At the end of the day, I mean, if your um, if your codes are exactly the same, the output that you get is going to be the exact same too, right? So uh, that's the IDE. And for the API, obviously we're going to use news API. So um, I'm gonna explain it to you a little bit uh, more detail in in chapter two. So uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, discuss more when we get there, right? So let's talk about the next one here, chapter three. So I'm going to explain like what we're going to build, right? So um, hopefully like by the end of this chapter, you have the general overview about uh, what our use website looks like, um, what features that our use website um, is going to have, and yeah, so hopefully at the end of that chapter, you get a little bit more excited because you know uh, things that we're going to build in our project, right? That's chapter three. Let's talk about the next one here, guys. Ch chapter four. So um, introductions to use API. I'm going to introduce you to this um, use API. So um, I'm going to uh, tell you about what use API um, is commonly used for and how to access use API, um, its pricing. Um, well, don't worry, guys. It's going to be completely free, all right? So um, we're going to get into more detail when we get there. Um, so yeah, that's chapter four. Uh, for mm -hmm. those of you who are familiar with news API, feel free to skip that chapter. However, if you haven't um, heard news API before, you haven't used news API before, make sure you stay there, pay pretty close attention to what I'm about to explain in chapter four. And chapter five, I'm going to um, guide you step by step on how to set up all required tools. I'm gonna um, guide you on how to set up your Visual Studio code, how to set up your news API, how to get, how to generate your news API key, and you know other supporting tools that you might um, need for our project. So that's chapter five, and chapter six is going to be like JavaScript mini course or crash course, whatever you want to call it, guys. Um, for those of you who are confident with your uh, JavaScript programming uh, skills. Feel free to skip that chapter. However, if you're not really confident with your JavaScript uh, programming skills, you would like to learn more, you would like to be more prepared for our upcoming project, make sure you stay there and pay very um, close attention to what I'm about to teach, guys. Um, we're going to have, um, we're going to have learn four different things. We're going to learn how to declare variables in JavaScript. We're going to learn how to um, build a functions and pass down parameters to that functions in JavaScript. We're going to learn how to make um, conditional statement like if else statement in JavaScript. We're also going to learn different data types in JavaScript, right? So all, all of them are like pretty basic things. So uh, if you're familiar with those concepts, make sure you just skip um, chapter six, right? And chapter seven, that's like the main part of our uh, course. We're going to build our news website. So for that chapter, we're going to move from this presentation slide to uh, Visual Studio Code or or whatever IDE that you choose to use, right? We're going to start coding our project. So that's chapter seven and chapter eight. Um, as soon as we're done with our um, use website, as soon as we're done with building our uh, website, we're going to test, right? Make sure that it works. Make sure that it is easy to use. It's user friendly from the standpoint of user. So that's very important, guys, right? So that's chapter eight, and let's talk about chapter nine here. Um, I'm going to share some strategies to monetize uh, your news websites, right? Obviously, um, some people want to build this news website just for, um, you know, additional projects on their portfolios. But other people who have like entrepreneurial mindsets, they want to build these news websites to generate them passive income, right? They want to build business off this website. So um, if you are those people, if you're one of those um, tech entrepreneurs, um, this course is definitely the right place for you to be. Because um, not only that you're going to learn like the technical stuff here, um, the programming stuff, but you're also going to learn the business perspective on how to uh, monetize your website, right? And uh, the good thing about this, actually, um, the strategies on how to monetize your websites that I'm going to share in chapter nine, 
is not only applicable for you know news websites it can be uh, applicable to to other type of websites right so yeah guys congratulations you're in the right place all right so then the, then let's talk about chapter 10 conclusion and summary um going to summarize all things that we've learned so far and also going to share a few key mm-hmm. takeaways on how to be better web developer and how to create high value high quality um website that's easy to use from the perspective of user and most importantly we're going to talk about the huge potentials to transform your website to a full-time business right so yeah guys i think that's all for um this video i'll see you in the next video guys bye what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video we're going to answer this particular equations how this course is intended for so based on my analysis there are three types of people who might need to take this course who might um be interested in this course so the first one here is web developer all right so if you're one of um web developers or you're you're planning to be one well this is definitely the right course for you this is definitely the right place for you to be um so if you're interested in web development and you're motivated to build um your own yeah news websites um or any other websites right it doesn't necessarily need to be like news websites just just happen like in this course um the project is to build the news websites but i'm pretty sure um you're going to be able to apply knowledge and skills that you you gain um from this course to build other websites besides news websites right or maybe you're curious about how news website is operated from the back end perspective um you're in the right course guys because not only that i'm gonna guide you step by step on how to um build news website from completely scratch using javascript i'm also gonna guide you on how to utilize api where you're gonna um, get your news um, automatically from news api right it's going to be uh, regular regularly updated so yeah guys that's uh, the first one let's talk about the second one if you want to own your website right so you have always been dreaming of owning your own websites or maybe you want to establish sustainable passive income by maybe displaying ads or selling subscriptions from your websites this is definitely the right um, course for you because you're going to learn different ways to monetize your websites and the good thing about it is the strategies that I'm going to share those are not only applicable for news websites it can be applicable to any other websites that you own right so um, I'm pretty sure um, you're going to learn a lot and obviously you need to pay very close attention to what I'm about to explain um, in the next couple sections because um, guess what you're going to get a lot of valuable um, knowledge here and the third one here if you're independent journalist all right uh, you might not be very interested in uh, web development you might not be very interested in like owning your own website but trust me if you're independent journalist um it's safe and it's way better for you to own your own website and let me tell you the reason why because if you've been posting your news um, on social media, for example, on YouTube, Facebook, or your Instagram, or other social media platforms, right? Or maybe your own YouTube channel, or whatever. Well, you never know. Sometimes you can get banned, right? Sometimes um, someone report you, and then you got banned for uh, reporting this particular news that shouldn't be reported, or something like that. Or maybe there is some disagreement with... The news that you report and you got banned so you're not completely safe right but if you have like your own websites um we can we can say that you have like your own place to uh post your news so you have like more control you have like more authority over things that you posted there because that's your own websites right that's um like your own place to post your news so yeah, guys, if you're an independent journalist or you might want to be a, uh independent journalist um, in the future and you would like or you're interested to have your own websites as a place to display and report your news, this is also um, 
an amazing course for you because um, not only that you're going to learn how to uh, create one but also we're going to do um, testing right because you need, you need to make sure that the users of your websites or whoever um, comments your website your visitors coming to your websites reading your news make sure they are comfortable using your websites right making sure they are they are comfortable and they don't have any difficulties using your website so yeah guys i think that's all for this video and i'll see you guys in the next video we're going to talk about tools id and api uh, that we're going to utilize for this project so i'll see you guys there What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to talk about tools, IDE, and API that we're going to use, we're going to utilize for the project in this course. So, let's talk about the first one here, uh, tools. Um, for the programming language, we're going to use JavaScript, all right? Um, we're not going to use any specific JavaScript framework. That's the reason why you don't see any list of framework down here, all right? So, this is the language that we're going to use. And for the IDE, just in case for those of you who don't know what IDE is, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Um, it is basically the place for you to write the code, right? Your programming environment. There are many different options out there. Uh, personally, I've been using Visual Studio Code for quite a while, so I'm gonna go with this for uh, the tutorial, right? So I'm gonna do all the coding on Visual Studio Code, and feel free to choose like whichever um, IDE that you're most comfortable with. Uh, choose whichever IDE that you like the most, right? You can also use Sublime Text if you want to, and there are many other um, IDE available for JavaScript, right? Uh, make sure if you install an IDE to your local, make sure you install um, IDE um, that accommodates JavaScript since this project is going to be written in JavaScript, right? So make sure you keep that in mind. And the third one here, the API. For those of you who don't know what API is, API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's basically like a, a bridge connecting the database, um, which is the use API in this case, to our uh, websites, right? So we're going to um, do like API call or API request, whatever you want to call it. So we ask the system, we ask the database to provide us with um, news data, and that's what um, the API is used for, right? And for the API that we're going to use, um, it's going to be um, newsapi.org, right? So uh, it's going to be completely free, guys. Don't worry. Um, you're not going to pay anything to get the access to news API. All right, guys, I think that's it. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to talk about um, the project, all right? So I'm gonna disclose um, the project that we're going to build, all right? So I'll see you guys there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, uh, we're going to talk about the project that we're going to build in this course, uh, which is the news websites, right? So I'm going to disclose like um, the features that our news website is going to have. So hopefully like by the end of this video, uh, you get a little bit more excited knowing all the features that you're going to build um, in this project, all right? So the first one here, we're going to build a ready to use and fully functioning news websites where the user can uh, refresh, uh, read some news and do some explorations on the site. So yeah, that's the first one. The second one, we're going to have um, news that is regularly updated, right? Since I mentioned previously, uh, our news website is going to be connected with news API. So it will be updated like automatically. You don't need to do it manually. Uh, which is great, right? Because that's what um, what we should be expecting from the user website. It needs to be able to update um, the data automatically. And in this case, the data is the news, right? Where, uh, where we get it from the news API. And the third one, we're going to have like a full integration with news API. So um, in the next couple um, videos, I'm going to guide you on how to generate your own um, API keys, which is going to be used as a tool to connect our news websites with the API because we're going to need the key um, you know, to integrate both. And the fourth one here, um, we're going to build a user-friendly interface. Um, to be more specific, that's going to be tested in the testing phase. Um, we're going to like position ourselves as the user of the um, website. So we're going to assess if 
the user interface of that website is easy to use it's user friendly and stuff so that's the features that we should be expecting to have and the fifth one here uh, we're going to build like fully customized dashboard it means that uh, we need to enable the user to uh, customize it based on their needs based on their personal preference right so yeah guys those are features that our um, news website project is going to have obviously um, it's not gonna be easy to create those features it's not gonna be um, straightforward it will take uh, lots of efforts and dedication guys so yeah make sure um, you need to be willing to work really hard in this project and obviously um i'm so excited guys to begin i really hope you get excited to knowing all these features that you're going to build so i'll see you guys in the next video we're going to talk about um the main thing here um the news api all right so in the next video i'm going to introduce you to um news api all right so um i will see you guys there i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys What's up guys, welcome back to the course. Um, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to News API. For those of you who have used this News API before, or you're familiar with News API, feel free to skip this video guys. Uh, however, if you haven't um, heard about News API, you haven't used News API before, uh, make sure you stay here and pay for the close attention to things that I'm about to explain, alright? So, the very first thing that you need to do is to ask yourself, what is News API, right? Well, it is Rails API, uh, which returns JSON search results for both current and historic news published by over 80,000 media sources. I think it's very important for us to highlight this, right? So, if you're asking, like, where are these news coming from? Well, it's not only coming from, like, one source, right? Because sometimes it's, if the news is only coming from one source, um, sometimes it can be kind of questionable, right? Whether... Um, the news is valid if there is a potential for like fake news or maybe hoax or anything like that but if it's coming from like 80,000 or even more than 80,000 sources then obviously um, I think it's pretty good API to use guys what do you think all right so that's um, that's what a news API is and let's talk about the use case all right um, like any other API obviously um, the use case is to get regular update news from various topics, right? Again, since um, the news are coming from like 80,000 or even more than 80,000 media sources, so uh, we, we're going to have like various different topics of news um, that can be um, displayed on our website, right? So that's the use case. That's the, the main use case of the news API. Um, and the pricing the pricing it's going to be um, completely free so don't worry you're not going to pay anything for the pricing um, obviously the free um, options also comes with limitations and you can only call up to 100 API requests alone um, every single day so don't worry we're not going to um, we're not going to call more than 100 API requests um, obviously this uh, 100 API requests um, is more than enough for us, more than enough for this project. So there's nothing you should worry about. And for the safety and security, since uh, you're going to generate the API key from this API, make sure that you keep it um, in a safe place so nobody is able to access that. Uh, and also treat that as your password, right? Because you don't want somebody steals your um, API key and then use it on your behalf and and yeah so make sure you just save it in a safe place guys and last one here data update frequency for the free options and the news will be available with 24 hours delay all right so it's not like real-time data unfortunately if you want to have like real-time data you're going to need to um upgrade to the paid plan but again since we are not going to spend any money here we're going to choose with we're, not, we're going to choose to go with the free option so um it's going to have like 24 hour delay so let's go to the website guys um we can click on this site all right so here we go i'm gonna uh, give you like a quick tour um so you're gonna get used to it obviously <laughs> um 
as you guys can see just click on this link all right um newsapi.org so this is the official website guys for news api and as you guys can see we have like three different menus here to get started um you might want to spend some time to uh, skim through it you don't necessarily need to like read every single sentence here um it's gonna be like a waste of your time right um you can go to documentations when you're stuck all right so if you um you're doing the code um uh, you're building your websites and then you're stuck you can go to the, the documentation because this is like the most reliable place for you to get um the solution to your problems um, since this is the official websites right um i really um urge you and recommend you to go here first before trying to go to somewhere else like stock overflow or any other forums and for the pricing uh they have like three different tiers the first tier is going to be completely free um zero dollars right and again um you have like uh limitations you can only call up to 100 requests per day and the other limitation is the data is not real time all right so it will be available with 24 hour delay so when you display the news on your website today um those are like news coming from like yesterday all right but if you want to have like the real time news then unfortunately uh, there's no other options besides upgrading your plan to business plan which costs you like 449 dollars per month which is pretty expensive in my personal opinion and i'm not really sure if that's going to be to um to be worth it right so and also like if you are um if you are planning to build very professional websites that you want to monetize then maybe you want to go with the advanced plan here it costs you like almost 18,000 um, not 18,000 1800 um, dollars per month right or if you choose to go or to pay it man uh, annually instead of monthly uh, it's going to be a little bit cheaper um, 359 dollars per month for a business plan and fourteen hundred dollars for um advanced plan right but we don't really care uh we're just gonna use this uh options we're gonna go with the free options all right so yeah the very first thing that you guys need to do is to log in all right but again um i don't want the video to be very long so the intention me behind creating um this video is to introduce you to news api i'm I'm also gonna create like separate videos um, to guide you step by step on how to sign up there and generate your own API key on use API website. So I'll see you guys there. What's up guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, I'm going to explain basic fundamentals of API. So make sure um, if you're not really familiar with the concept of API, make sure you pay very close attention um, to what I'm about to explain because in the project we're going to build our news websites we're going to um, utilize api to get our news data right so make sure you understand this concept very well uh, before getting into the project so um as you guys can see here i have um this image all right so let me grab my pen first i'm gonna go with blue so let me get this pencil blue all right here we go uh this is actually a pretty good illustration guys all right api is like a waiter in restaurant so waiter in a cafeteria or restaurants right so he comes to the customers and asks hey guys um what do you want to order right and the customer replied back to him hey uh we want a uh, fried chicken for example right so so um the customer make order or in programming language we usually call it as for request right so api request and then the waiter knew that the customer wants uh, fried chicken and then he goes to the kitchen and then he tells the chef hey uh, the customer actually wants fried chicken all right so wait a minute and then the chef is going to cook the fried chicken and then once it's ready as soon as as the fried chicken ready then the chef is going to give it to the waiter and then the waiter will deliver the order right so he's going to serve the fried chicken to the, back to the customers so that's how API works. Um, pretty good illustrations uh, that represents how API works in real life, right? So the waiter is like the API. The customer is the website, all right? This is the website. Uh, I apologize if my handwriting looks kind of weird. Um, it's kind of hard to write it here in a whiteboard. 
and the, the chef or the kitchen it's kind of like the database right so in programming right um in programming when we make the order we usually call it as make request right api call api request so let's um implement this concept to the case that we're going to build um our news website right so we're going to have a news website um let's say this is our news website and then this is news api right this is the news api and then this is uh its database with more than 80,000 um, 80k sources so let's say the user uh, make a request um, make API request hey uh, I want a news about let's say politics or about um, weather or maybe the news about uh, sports right so then I will go to the API and then the API will get it from the database and then once um once it get the data the news and then it will be returned to the news websites that we're going to build right and then the news it will be displayed here so in other words api is kind of like a bridge connecting the database with the user interface right and it's very important thing to know that to access the api to access the use api you need to have the api key right so that's why we need to generate our api key to have the access to the data here so yeah guys in the next video i'm gonna guide you step by step on how to generate your api key um so i'll see you guys in the next video what's up guys welcome back to the course um in this video i'm going to guide you step by step on how to set up your ide um, in this tutorial, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code because I've been using this for quite a while and I'm pretty comfortable using this platform. Um, however, if, you've, if you're not really a big fan of Visual Studio Code, um, you can choose whichever IDE that you're most comfortable with. You can pick whichever IDE that you like the most, right? Um, so just in case you don't like uh, Visual Studio Code, I provide like another alternative to it. Um, it can be like Sublime Text. So let's um, go to Visual Studio Code download page here. This is the official website of Visual Studio Code. Um, this is the download page. And as you guys can see here, you have like three different options. You have Windows, you have Linux, and also Mac. Um, currently on Mac. So if you're on Mac, just like me, um, just click on this right or maybe you're on linux or maybe you're you're on windows make sure you install visual studio package your local um that aligns with your operating system all right so don't install the mac version for if you're on windows or don't install linux versions if you're on mac for example right so make sure you install um whichever package here that aligns with your um operating system all right so that's uh the visual studio code i'm not going to install it because i already have it installed on my local and i'm gonna close this tab and let's go to sublime text all right so kind of the same thing guys this is the official website so sublime text um you have like three different options here mac os uh, windows or linux all right make sure you install sublime text packets to your uh, local that aligns with your operating system for instance if you're on linux then click on linux if you're on windows click on windows or you're just like me um you're on mac click on mac right so i'm not gonna install it i already have it but um again as i mentioned previously uh, for this tutorial i'm gonna use visual studio code because i prefer that however um only because i use it does not necessarily mean that you need to use visual studio code to um pick whatever that you want right so yeah, I think that's it for um, setting up your Visual Studio Code. And once you have your Visual Studio Code installed, just click on it, right? Uh, as you can see, this is the dashboard. And you have like several different um, features here on the left side of the screens, right? So if you want to create like a new file, just click on new file, or maybe you already have an existing file you want to open it just click on open right or you might want to clone your git repository click on this and as you can see here um this is like the extension page because if we are going to use javascript 
uh, there is nothing that we are going to um, install however if you're going to write your program in python for instance then you need to install your python or maybe you might want to add like some other extensions uh, feel free to add like those extensions but uh, in my opinion for the project that we're going to build in this course we're not going to add any extension here but you know if you want to spend some time exploring uh, several different extensions here that might help you to uh, to code better well feel free to um, install those extensions guys and yeah um, so I think that's it I'll see you in the next um, video where I'm going to guide you step by step on how to generate um, API key from use API because we are going to need that for our um, project right so I'll see you guys there bye all right welcome back to the course folks um in this video i'm gonna guide you step by step on how to generate um use api key since we're going to use it for in our project all right but before um getting that far uh we're gonna need to register to use api first right and don't worry as i mentioned previously in the previous video we're gonna go with the developer plan so it's going to be completely free um you're not going to be charged all right so don't worry there's nothing you should worry about and Let's click on login. That's the first thing that you need to do. And again, I'm assuming you haven't created your account yet here. Um, if you already have your, uh, if you already have your account, make sure you just log in. But I'm assuming you haven't created your account yet. That's why I'm gonna go with um, get one here down here. And as usual, uh, just like any other website, any other applications. Um, you need to um, enter your first name here, uh, your email address that you want to use for this account. Um, you're also going to need to choose your password. Make sure um, it's a password that's easy to remember, All right? And then down here, you're given like two options. I'm in, in I'm an individuals or I'm a business or working on behalf of a business. Uh, personally, I recommend you to go with the first one. I'm an individual since the project that we're going to build and the news website that we're going to build is going to be for our own use right um we're not going to release it to the public um so i think it's a personal project so it's better to go with the first one and obviously you need to click on i'm not a robot to verify yourself that you're not a robot and the last thing that you need to do is to click on agree but making sure um you read all these terms and conditions first before clicking on agree you don't necessarily need to like read every single sentence here <laughs> just make sure you understand the, the idea and then yeah um click on submit all right and then once you click submit maybe you wait a couple seconds and then uh, go to the, your um email inbox make sure you go to the email that you use to register on use api and then um use api um send you an email like this right this is the email that i got like a couple hours ago because i've just um, registered like a couple of hours ago using this email um, address and uh, they sent me like my api key as an as you can see here and again you should treat this as a password but i don't mind using my api key because this is just for tutorial purposes i don't really mind you um, seeing my api key um, but i recommend you to save it in a safe place right um, you're the only one that should be able to access your API key. Treat this as like a password. And yeah. So that's how you got your API key. If you don't find it on your inbox, you can go to your spam folder. Um, just in case if, if the email was sent to your spam. But I think that's kind of... That's kind of uh, rare. Most likely, the email is going to be sent to your inbox. So yeah, check your inbox, and then um, yeah, just make sure that you uh, come back here to newsapi.org and then log in. Right as you can see, I've already logged in. So if you click on this um, username or my email, um, you can see my API key here. Right my api key and also like my plan right now my plan is developer which is the free plan and what else and down here you can see the usage here i haven't um i haven't called i haven't made any api request so far that's the reason why you see there's nothing here it's blank right and 
if we scroll down a little bit uh, you can see like the api status right so yeah that's that's like your own dashboard um, we can go back to home and the next video we're going to talk a little bit about documentation because we're going to um we're going to be dealing a lot with the documentation page and get started page right so i'll see you guys there right what's up folks um welcome back to the course in this video we're going to go over um the get started sections and the documentation sections all right so first of all um you need to make sure that you've logged in here all right um and just in case you haven't created your account yet make sure you create your account if you don't know how you can watch my previous video and now uh, just click on this button get api key just to make sure that you already have your account here and then this is your api key that you're going to use all right um let's go back home here and click on get started all right so as you can see um use api um offers documentations in several different languages you can see curl javascript ruby python and even net right so um since this course um it's all about javascript we're going to build our project we're going to build our news websites using javascript programming language so we're just going to click on this javascript right and if you scroll down here um all right you scroll down you have like two main options the first one is to search articles on the web that mention a keyword or a phrase and the second one here is to get the current top headlines for a country category or publishers right um for this project we're going to go with the first option so we're going to um, display the news websites um we're going to display um the articles in our on our news websites that mention a keyword or a phrase so you can scroll down a little bit to see the documentations oops here we go um i think i need to go back here all right so just click on this all right so this is the link the url of the api that we're going to use and as you can see if you um drag this to the right um at the end of the link you have um key I'm sorry api key equals to api underscore key then you need to replace this api key with your own api key right so in my case i'm going to replace it with this because this is my api key right so uh you you need to replace it with your own api key right don't just copy and paste mine um because it might not work right make sure you copy and paste your own api key so this is the um the url that we're going to copy to our ide um, in the next couple of videos and as you can see this is the example of requests and this is example of response that you can get right the status the total request the articles the source id name author title descriptions right so these are these are um, you know a couple examples of what it, it looks like and you can scroll down here to this is um the link if you choose to go with the second options where you want to get the current top headlines for a country or category right kind of the same thing the idea is pretty much the same uh, at the end of the line you need to replace this with your own api key right so just remove this part um remove this part and replace it with your own api key and this is also pretty much the same guys um like the examples of the request and response that you can expect to get from the api and you can click on the documentations and then see like the endpoint it's very important um, if you're not really familiar with api um like the very first thing that you need to um, look at um, when it comes to um, api is the endpoint right because that's like the data that we are looking for so click on the endpoint here um, as you can see this news api has two main endpoints the first one is uh, v2 uh, v2 means version 2 um, slash everything this is the one that we're going to use and the second one here is v2 uh, slash top headlines again uh, in this project we're going to use this endpoint however um, maybe you want to do practice on your own you want to create like different websites you can try to use like this second endpoint too right but this project we're going to use the first one the first endpoint and 
uh, you can click on errors array right? so if you make a bad request we'll let you know by returning a relevant http status code along with more detail in the body all right so um you know sometimes when your codes are not correct or maybe there are like some problems with your um codes you might see an error right and as you can see here um there are several different type of errors that you might might get um and these are like the explanations right so don't worry don't don't worry when you see an error um uh, you can go to the documentation page of news api and then see like what uh, causes your error for example um, let's pick a random example here maybe like api key disabled means you know you need to renew your api key because it has been disabled or maybe let's pick another one here um sources too many right this is an indication that you have requested too many sources on a single request try splitting uh, request to into two small requests yeah so th those are like um errors um explanations sometimes we do get errors so don't um don't panic guys just go to the documentations and then see what causes your error right and again um as i mentioned previously um the news api offers um several different languages here since we are going to go with python so just click on not js uh, so these are like ex, uh, examples of um, the codes and obviously um, when we start a project we need to install news api right and alongside with news api we're also going to use axios so we're also going to need to install axios too um, in our ide all right so these are like the examples of the code um, that you can use as your um, guideline to write your own uh, code for the project right um yeah i think that's all you need to know maybe you want to spend some time scrolling around and try to explore um the documentation page of news api so you, you can be like more familiar with all this stuff and it's definitely going to be um helpful so for example when you're stuck in a project you know like where where you need to go right so yeah i think that's it uh i'll see you in the next video we're going to talk about um javascript mini course that we're going to um have in the next video so i'll see you guys there what's up folks welcome back uh welcome to javascript mini course uh if you're familiar and if you're confident with your javascript programming um skills uh just feel free to skip this video feel free to skip this chapter um because i think you don't need this right but if you are not really familiar with javascript you um you're not really confident with your skills in javascript programming you might want to learn more and make sure you stick in this video and pay very close attention to what i'm about to explain here all right um so javascript mini course was intended to prepare you better for the upcoming project so i will really want to make sure that you have all the fundamentals of javascript before getting to the actual project right uh, make sure you're well prepared and obviously we're not going to uh, learn all things about javascript we're just going to learn things that we will need in the project um, so there are like four different um, practices that we're going to um, do in this javascript mini course the first one is to learn how to declare variables all right so you're going to learn different ways to declare variables in javascript like let cons and for and the second one here, uh, you're going to learn several different data types in JavaScript, like string, number, and boolean, how to declare them, and like what are those variables uh, commonly used for, and stuff like that. And the third one here is to create if else statements. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to have like lots of if else statements in our project, but I think it's a good logic that you need to know, you need to understand. So even you don't use it a lot, but knowing how to create if else statements pretty basic stuff that you need to master as an as a software engineer or a web developer right so we're going to learn how to create conditional statement and javascript um i'm gonna need to fix this i guess it's not java it's javascript java is like different uh, programming language so i don't want to confuse you guys with um that mistake all right i apologize once again and uh, the last one here is functions and 
um, parameter all right so i'm gonna teach you on how to build functions and pass down parameters um, to the functions in javascript and don't worry um even if you're not really familiar with functions i'm gonna explain it from the perspective of mathematics and slowly from there i'm gonna um kind of like implement that knowledge um to the programming all right so um gonna use like the function in mathematics as illustrations to make it easier for you to understand right i think that's it for javascript mini course um i'm so excited um to begin our uh, training so i'll see you guys in the next um video we're gonna learn how to declare variables in javascript so i'll see you there what's up folks welcome back to the course welcome to our first sections of javascript mini course um where we're going to learn how to declare variables in javascript all right so make sure you you're um on vs code or or it doesn't necessarily need to be vs code right make sure you pick whichever ide that you're most comfortable with so um right now i'm on vs code and just click on new file right click on new file uh, make sure you name it with the file with the name that is easy to remember um you name your file with a name that's easy to remember so i'm gonna go with declare declaring variables dot js make sure um at the end of the your file name you need to end it with dot js so it's indicating that you want to create um javascript file right so declaring variables dot js click enter and then uh, make sure you save it in the folder that you want um, so I'm going to save it here on news websites. This is the folder that I want uh, the file to be saved. And as you can see here, um, you see the yellow icon. This is JavaScript file, right? And yeah, let's start. Uh, for those of you who are very new to programming, you uh, know nothing about the code and stuff. So in JavaScript, we can use slash slash like this to um give comments right usually we give comments to explain um the codes like explain what the that line of code does um kind of like a documentation guys so um sometimes the code is kind of observed so we want to make sure that other people um, understand what like this code represents so we're just going to have like comment like this and when you hit compile when you run your program like the line with this um slash slash um not gonna be compiled right because that's not part of the program that's just um command line that's just the documentation line so it's not gonna be compiled so when you run it uh, it will be excluded all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna start with uh, name this training as declaring variables variables in javascript all right well there are like three different ways to declare variables in javascript guys um the first one is to use cons, right? So let me give you an example, right? So cons, like this, cons. Um, let's say what's going to be the name of the variables that we want to use as an example. Maybe name, right? Because name is constant. You are not going to change your name. Or maybe, like, very less likely you're going to change your name, right? So my name is Chris. So um, Chris, like this. That's it, um, semicolon at the end. Um, that's a pretty good practice in JavaScript because um, in Python, you don't need to have semicolon, right? But in JavaScript, even if you don't have semicolon, it's still gonna work, but uh, I guess that's just part of my habit to end it with semicolon. And you can print it using uh, console.log, like this, console.log. And you're going to need to put the name of the variables that you want to print. So in this case, going to be name, all right? So just uh, save it first and run without debugging all right so we're gonna go with node.js and as you can see it's it prints chris right and let's do another experiment here what if we reassign value to this variable name i'm gonna reassign another value maybe uh my brother's name or so like this and uh don't forget to save uh your file first and then let's rerun it again run without debugging and as you can see, uh, there's an error. And the reason why, you're not able, you're not allowed to reassign like another um, value to constant variable, right? It is constant. So constant means that you can only assign a, a value 
to that variable once and that's it you're not gonna be allowed to change or assign another value to that variable that's it so yeah make sure you delete this and then save it all right so that's the first one i'm gonna give another comment here um so constant variable um constant variable or maybe i'm gonna start the sentence this way you can only assign value to constant variable once all right it's very important uh, for you to keep that in mind you can only assign value to constant variable once um, otherwise you're gonna see an error just like this right and the second way to declare a variable is to use let like this maybe let uh, my age to be well I'm 21 years old right now so I'm just gonna go with this let age uh, equal 21 and then console.lock right so I'm gonna print my age right so um, print my age here um, don't forget to save it first before you run and I'm gonna click run run without debugging here all right and as you can see it prints 21 all right so um, you might be wondering like what's the difference between cons and let right well if you declare a variable using cons it means that you can only assign a value to that variable once and if you uh, uh, reassign another value to that variable you're going to see an error just like what we saw a um, couple of seconds ago right mm -hmm. but for let you are allowed to um, reassign another value so for example like next year obviously i'm gonna be 22 right so i'm gonna be 22 and i know uh you need to save it first before I run the program and as you can see uh it's 22 and you don't see any error right so um obviously for let um you can assign more than one variable i'm sorry you can assign more than one value or maybe that's not really a good sentence, I guess. You can reassign value. You can reassign value to let variable. But there's a limitations uh, with this um, variable that you need to know, right? Um, so, for example, you create the functions and then you declare a variable using let and then you you're going to try to uh, access this variable from like different functions then you won't be able to do that right so there's also another limitations but you can only access uh let variable from the same functions so yeah even though you can resend values to this variable but there's limitations you can only um access that variable like from the same function so for example for instance i create like another functions down here and then i try to um recall this variable uh age well i won't be able to do that right so you might be wondering hey is there any solutions to that problem though um yeah of course there is um so you can declare another for uh, another um variable using for right so this is the solution to the, the previous problem so let's say for um Amount. I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna set it set it equal to ten, right? And then I'm gonna reassign it sixty eight, maybe just random number, you know. And I'm gonna console log this uh, variable. So amount. And before running, I'm gonna save it first and then run run without debugging all right so here we go 68 so for for variable i think it's almost perfect or maybe it's perfect right because you can reassign value you can reassign value to for variable and you can also you can also access uh, for variable from different functions so for instance, um, I create like another functions down here and then I still can access this variable. I still can recall this amount variables even though this is um, 
this is from like different functions or even though I declare this out from from outside of the functions right you still can access that uh, even though you're in different functions so that's uh, the good thing about for a variable so yeah make sure when you declare variables you keep these things in mind you, you declare variables using the type of variables that um, suits with your actual need for instance you want constants you don't want that variable to be changed right uh, then go with go with name I'm sorry go with constants and maybe you want that a variable to be a little bit dynamic right you can change you can reassign values to that variable you can go with uh, either let or for depending if you actually have the the need to access that variable from outside of the function or not if, if you need then you need to go with for but if there is no necessity for you to access the variable from outside of the functions um, well you can go with let all right so I think that's it uh, I'll see you in the next video. We're going to learn how to, um, not how to, but we're going to learn different data types in JavaScript, right? We're going to learn um, string, we're going to learn a boolean, and and numbers. All right, so I'll see you there. What's up, folks? Welcome back to the course. In this video, um, we're going to continue our JavaScript mini course. So we're going to start our second practice to learn um, several different data types in JavaScript, all right? So, uh, make sure you save this um, file, all right? Declaring variables.js and then click on file and new file. And I'm gonna name it as, make sure you name it with whatever name you want. Make sure you just um, name it with a name that's easy to remember. So I'm gonna name it with um, data types, data types, data types, um, js.js, that's it. And I'm gonna save it here, right? Right, so um, there are many different data types in JavaScript. However, I'm gonna go with this three because um, this three are like the most common one. Um, so I'm gonna go with um, string, right? So string, um, number, and boolean. And people who are more familiar with Python, they might be wondering like, hey, um, what is number? you might be wondering what is number right because in your head you might think well there is a float for decimals but there's also like integer for, for like whole number right but in javascript we don't really discriminate based on the type of number we don't really care whether it's um, decimals or or integer it's a whole number we don't really care right whether it's a decimal with a comma or it's a whole number uh, we just call it as number that's it right so that's why we don't have like integer or float. Um, we just have it as number. So let's go with string. Uh, for those of you who might be wondering like what is string and programming string is basically a data type um, um, that store a letter, a word, or even a sentence, right? So for example, I'm gonna uh, create a variable here called um, CT, right? CT. Let city, what's the name of the city? For example, I'm gonna go with um, Miami, right? Miami, or yeah, Miami. And we can console.log. This is one of many examples of uh, declaring um, string variables, right? Because as you can see here, Miami, it's definitely not a number, it's a word, it's a name of a city, so it's definitely a string. Console.log, um, city. Right, so that's it. Make sure you save it first and run, run with debugging and click on Node.js. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Miami, right? What if I get rid of this quotations um, sign? So I'm gonna save it first and gonna hit run, right? Run without debugging. And obviously down here you see an error. And reason why, because if we do it this way, um, it means that we're assigning uh, this variable Miami to this variable city. However, Miami, we haven't even declared Miami as a variables up here, right? And so Miami doesn't have any value. So you declare a, a variable called city and you assign um, like a variable that hasn't even been declared previously and it doesn't have any value. There, there, there is a reason why, uh, there's a reason why you see an error down here, right? So yeah, make sure uh, for a string, you need to add like quotation more like this 
All right, so I'm gonna save it. And let me do uh, another example. So I'm gonna create um, another variable here called um, first name, all right, first name. First name, let's say my first name is Chris and my last name My last name is Olika, like this, right? Um, I'm gonna create another variable down here called full name. And my full name, uh, I don't want to rewrite this again because I'm pretty lazy. So I'm just gonna recall these variables that I've declared up here, okay, right? Because I assigned this very value Chris to this variable called first name, and I also assigned this Ald Aldika as a value to this. Um, variable called last name so it's going to be first name plus last name that's it i'm gonna console log i'm gonna print uh, the last name here um not the last name i'm gonna print the full name all right so i'm gonna save it first and then run hit run and you see um chris alika right and and as you can see here, you have like addition or a positive sign here. It has nothing to do with mathematical operation. It has nothing to do with calculations. Uh, in programming, when you have like um, this sign, right? It's simply like a conjunction. It's like you're adding like two strings together. And the reason why I have like a um, empty, spring, empty string here, like a blank space, because I don't want uh, the output to look a little bit messy. I want it to have like a space between the first string with the second string that's the reason why I add this part right all right so let's um learn another um important thing that you need to know about string for example um i have a variable called country right what's the name of the country maybe germany like this all right Germany and you want to know like how many digits does this um, string um, consisted of right so you can do it by uh, creating a variable called length maybe like this let length and um, the name of the con the name of the variable which is country dot length right and then you can console log The length like this all right so make sure you save it first and uh, you can run it run without debugging and as you can see it's seven and you can count it manually like one two three four five six seven right so that's um how you count like how many digits does this um string consisted of all right and if you're not really sure if it is actually a string or not, you can um, do something like this. Um, Console.log. .log, type of um, whatever variable that you want to check. For example, you want to check if the uh, this variable ct is actually a string. Just type in ct, right? So save it and then uh, run it, all right? And as you can see, it's string. Indeed, it is a string because this variable is definitely a string, right? So I think we're done with the string. Let's move on to the number. So um, obviously, uh, as you guys can guess what number is, well, <laughs> that's a variable to store a number, right? Um, so let me give you a couple of different examples here. Um, for instance, we want to calculate the volume of the volume of a beam right so we want to calculate the volume of a beam and for those of you who are not really familiar with the formula so the formula is uh, with the uh, multiplied by length multiplied by height right so that's the formula and and um, let's do the calculations right so let's do the calculations so uh, create the variable first. Uh, I'm gonna go with um, let volume. Let volume. I'm also gonna declare another variable called um, width. All right. So let's say the width is ten. Um, then the height is 
I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna pick a random number here, 8, and let um, length, I guess the length is gonna be, well, and as you can see, um, there's an error here, um, you see like, the right line here, because um, in JavaScript, or in programming in general, you're not allowed to declare um, another variable with the same exact name, alright, so make sure you uh, name this with different name, maybe link i don't know yeah maybe like this all right so for the link it's going to be nine and volume it's going to be the multiplications of the width with the length um with the height right and let's print in let's console.lock the volume so here we go. Um, let's save it first before running our program. Let's see. It's 722, right? So like 10 multiplied by 8, which is 80 multiplied by 9, which is 722. So that's the volume of the beam, right? So that's um, that's number. And let's talk about the last one here, uh, which is Boolean. So Boolean like this. Right, so for um, the boolean, let's um, create variable called volume want. Right, so volume want um, is going to be a hundred centimeter cube, but we're not going to um, have the unit. Um, second one here is going to be the second volume, which is the volume two. Um, it's going to be five hundred centimeter cube. Again, we're not going to have the unit, and the idea here is to do check. Right, so we want to make sure that volume one is greater than volume two. All right. Um, I know it might sound kind of ridiculous because you already knew that volume 1 is definitely less than volume 2 or volume 2 is greater than volume 1. That's pretty obvious. But again, this is just an example for boolean, right? That's how boolean uh, works in JavaScript. So, uh, let's create a variable called check. Alright, so we're going to check it um, using boolean like this, boolean. Um volume one has to be less than volume two right um and we're going to console.log um to see if it's actually true so we're going to console.log the check i'm gonna save it first uh, make sure you guys save it and run it. and as you can see here it's true what if we um make it like this volume one greater than volume two obviously it's going to be false so i'm gonna run it uh yeah and as you can see it's false and reason why because obviously 100 is not greater than uh 500 right 100 is is less than to uh 500 so yeah i'm gonna return this back to less and i'm gonna save it and then run it again and as you can see it's true and the reason why because 100 is definitely less than 500 so yeah, I think that's it for um, this practice. Uh, next video, we're going to learn how to create uh, if-else statement, how to create conditional statements in JavaScript. So I'll see you there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to continue our JavaScript mini course. Um, we're going to start our third practice, which is to learn how to create conditional statement, if-else statement in JavaScript. So I'm going to use an example of GPA, right? So I'm gonna create a variable called uh, my GPA, like this, my GPA. And let's say my GPA is 3.5, right? Medium GPA, I guess. Um, and const um, min GPA um, is 3.0, right? So let me create the if statement. So if in JavaScript, um, you need to open the parentheses. That's going to be where you put the condition. So let's say my GPA needs to be greater to minimum GPA to be accepted at the university, right? So if that's the case, if my GPA is greater than uh, the minimum GPA, um, then I'm going to be accepted like this. However, if that's not the case, I'm going to be not accepted or rejected, right? So console log, um, not accepted. 
and let's save the file first um, and run it so I'm gonna run it and as you can see here um, it says accepted right because the reason why because my GPA is 3.5 and then the minimum GPA that I need to have to get accepted is 3.0 right so um, so that um, my GPA like 3.5 that satisfies the requirement which is here right my GPA which is 3.8 is greater than 3.0 however what if my GPA is actually like 2.7 right it's obviously lower than the minimum GPA so uh, when you run the program you should see um, not accepted right so let's return my GPA back to its original number um, so it's 3.5 right so that's uh, one of the examples we can do like another example here uh, we're going to make it a little bit more complicated <laughs> So I'm gonna create another variable here called for scholarship. So now you have like your GPA, which is 3.5. You have um, constant minimum GPA, which is the amount of the GPA that you need to have to get accepted and scholarship GPA, which is like the minimum GPA that you need to have to get the scholarship, all right? So we're gonna set it to be like 3.2. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the minimum GPA that you need to have to get scholarship. Um, so let's create the conditional statement. We're going to have like two conditions here. Uh, the first one is to check if my GPA is, uh, is greater than the minimum GPA like this. And also check if my GPA is greater than scholarship GP, all right? So if um, my GP satisfy both of these requirements, if my GP is greater than minimum GPA and also greater than scholarship GPA, it means that I'm gonna get accepted and also scholarship, all right? Accepted and scholarship, all right? So we're going to have else if that's like the second conditions if we're just gonna copy we're just gonna copy and paste this all right so gonna copy and paste this um if my gpa is greater than uh the minimum gpa however my gpa is less than scholarship gpa then i'm going to get accepted but i'm not going to get the scholarship all right so i'm gonna console.log um accepted And the last one here, else console.log not accepted, right? And we're gonna save it first and play around with the number to make sure our program works the way it's supposed to. And as you can see here, uh, it says accepted in the scholarship. And the reason why is my first, uh, my GPA is three point five and it is greater than uh, the GPA that I need to get uh, in order to be accepted and also greater than the scholarship uh, GPA, the minimum GPA that I need to have to get the scholarship, all right? So what if I lower this to maybe 3.1, right? So I'm gonna save it first and then run it again. So I'm gonna run it. Oops, not debugging, I need to run it. And as you can see, um, it says accepted says accepted right but i don't get any scholarships um even though uh, my gpa is 3.1 so it it is uh, greater than 3.0 um however though um it's less than 3.2 right which is the minimum gpa that i need to have to get the scholarship so it simply says uh, accepted but not scholarship and what if i lower my gpa to maybe like 1.7 all right it's really really low um gonna run it again and it says not accepted right so i'm gonna return this back to its original number 3.5 save and run it again it says so accepted and scholarships right okay so i think that's it so next video we're going to learn um how to build functions and how to pass parameters into the functions so i'll see you there What's up guys, welcome back to the course. Uh, let's continue our JavaScript mini course um, training. So this is the last practice, which is functions and parameters. So I'm gonna 
create a new file here I'm gonna name it as functions functions and parameter parameter all right so dot js don't forget to have ended your file name with dot js and yeah save it in wherever folder you want all right so here we go um for those of you who are not really familiar with functions in programming uh, don't worry i'm gonna explain it from the perspective of mathematics first uh, i'm pretty sure like lots of you like uh vast majority of you guys know functions in mathematics right like uh, the, the one that you learned in maybe middle school or maybe high school so for example you have functions like this f of x equals to 3x squared plus um 2x minus 6 maybe something like this yeah um and what if I told you that x is equals to um, 3, right? And when we solve it, we're just going to replace um, every single x in the equation with 3, right? So we're going to have like 3 multiplied by 3 squared plus 2 multiplied by 3 and it's going to be subtract by 6 right so let's do the calculation manually here um, so we have 3 squared which is 9 multiplied by 3 27 27 plus 2 multiplied by 3 6 27 plus 6 um, 33 subtract by 6 um, you're going to have 27 right so 27 that's the final answer so yeah the concept is exactly the same if you implement that same concept of programming right so um the functions in javascript can be declared like this functions uh let's say we're going to name the function as sum open and close parentheses again um for the first function i'm going to make it very simple i don't want to add parameters to the functions since this is the first functions um so we're going to create a variable called let's see um number one and we're going to set that variable to let's say 100 and another variable called number two and we're going to set it to, uh equal to 150 and we're going to have uh, another variable called number three and we're going to set that variable equal to 200 right and we're going to create another variable here called sum um, it's going to be the additions of number one two and three right so number one plus two number two plus number three like this and the function is going to return sum uh, maybe it's good practice to use um, the name of a variable is kind of different from the name of the function so i'm gonna name it as total right so total so we're going to return total like this and we're going to um call the functions down here so i'm gonna call it um console.lock console.lock um total open and close parenthesis like this all right so i'm gonna save the file first before um running oops it's not so not save us but just save right so i'm gonna run it run without debugging and as you can see here um well there's there's an error let's see um what's happening here total is not defined right well let's see why total is not defined i have defined total here and Oh, actually, um, the name of the function is sum, not total, right? Total is the name of variable. I apologize, guys, for that mistake. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it again here. And as you can see here, the answer is 40, 450, right? So 100 added by 150, you got like 250. Added by 200, you got 450. So that's the total, right? So that's the first um, example. And let's do another example, right? So I'm going to use... Um, the same exact um, functions so let's name the functions as f like this 
and the parameter is going to be x and again it's going to be exactly the same guys right don't worry um you're going to replace x with every single um value assigned to the x right um so the idea the concept uh, of parameters and functions is whenever the user or whatever whoever is that like passing down the parameter to that functions and the value of value of that parameter is going to be assigned to the variables inside that functions right so you might be a little bit confused let me tell you like how it actually works it's going to be easier for you to see like what's going on here so um let's see we're going to have f equals um three multiplied by x square like this and plus two multiplied by x subtract by six right and the function is going to return f all right that's it and let's do the testing so console.lock um we're going to test using the same x okay so x equals three so three like this so f of three here we go I'm gonna save it first and before running we know that the answer the output that we are going to get is going to be exactly the same right like 27 so i'm gonna run it and as you can see the output that we got is exactly the same like what we did uh, what we got here when we did it manually when we counted manually right so yeah they're basically the same guys so whatever a uh, value whatever parameter um pass to these functions right it's going to be um, assigned as a value of x right so every single x here is going to be replaced with the value of this parameter right so let's do one more example to make sure that you guys understand the concept very well right so i'm gonna create a functions called um, area of rectangle right and it's going to take two parameters the first one is going to be the length and the second one is going to be the width, right? So, um, going to I'm going to add a comment here uh, for those of you who don't know like what the what is the formula for calculating the area of rectangle. Well, it's going to be um, the multiplications of length by width, right? So let's create a variable called a called area right so area is going to be um, length uh, multiply by width and the answer let's create another variable here called answer um, so the answer is going to be a string right um, so the area of the rectangle is we're going to have um, empty string here to give us space and we're going to add area and also the unit right so what's going to be the unit um, it's going to be let's say meter squared meter squared like this right pretty sure uh, yeah it's meter squared and the function is going to return answer right so the, f the function is going to return answer so the idea is whatever values uh, whatever parameters given to these functions like it's those uh, parameters are going to be assigned as a value to um, length and width right so for instance um, I pass down um, 3 as the length and 5 as the width then 3 is going to be assigned as a value to this length and 5 is going to be assigned as a value to this width right so that's how it uh, how it works so yeah I'm just gonna uh, test to make sure if this functions uh, works console.lock uh, area of rectangle I'm gonna go with 5 and 10 right so the output that we should be expecting is 50 right because you multiply 5 by 10 sh should be like 50 meters squared so I'm gonna run it the area of rectangle is 50 meters squared perfect so that's how uh, you build functions guys and pass them parameters and Hopefully, like by the end of this JavaScript mini course, you're ready and you feel more well prepared for our upcoming project. So yeah, um, 
I'll see you in the next video where we're going to start our project. So I really hope you get excited. I'll see you guys there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to start our project. So for those of you who use um, Mac, just like me, open your terminal, or maybe you, if you're on Windows, open up your command prompt, right? Those are basically the same. So open up your terminal. Um, and we're going to write some command line here to create our react package right so we're going to use javascript for our programming language and we're going to install um, and initialize our react packets first um, so you can do it by typing npx create um, npx create react app and Make sure you name it with a name that's easy to remember so for this project i'm going to name it as news website because that's what we're going to build right news website enter so now um it's initializing our react package uh, it might take a while guys so be patient um it might take a couple minutes so be patient guys all right Still loading. We'll see how long it will take, but I'm pretty sure it's it's going to be like less than three minutes or less than two minutes, right? So we're going to use React as our packets, um, and we're also going to install um, Axios for our project, but we're going to do it later. Um, not on this terminal, we're going to do it on our VS Code, right? So we're going to open up our terminal on VS Code to download, um, to install Axios. All right, be patient guys. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, like I, last time I did it, it only took me like less than two minutes. So hopefully this time, um, not take, not gonna take too long too so right we'll see so now it's initializing the git repository okay removing template package using npm all right guys so it seems like we're done with this so uh, you can close your terminal um, and we can go to vs code right so you click open up your face code here um, and as you can see here um, this is the extension uh, sections feel free to install any extensions that you feel um, going to have going to be helpful for you but for this project uh, personally I don't have any um, extensions that I want to download that I want to install so yeah uh, but again make sure you install whatever in, uh, in whatever um, extensions that you you would like to install right so I'm just gonna uh, minimize this for now and I'm going to find where my file is located so um, if you're in Chrome just click file and find and just type in the name of the file that you um, entered previously so it's going to be news website All right so here we go I'm going to move it to desktop um, and I'm going to drag um, the file to my folder. Uh, look it wherever you want, guys. Right. So I just want to be uh, organized. So I'm going to move it to uh, this folder. Right. Because there's a folder for our project. So let's go back to our VS Code here. And then uh, you can click on Open. Right. Open, fold, open folder. And you go to the folder where your uh, file was located so i'm gonna go to news websites and i'm gonna click on news websites and then click open all right so here we go um and as you can see these are these are um the react packages right so uh, as you can see we have like public here uh, icon html uh, we have two logos manifest.json uh, txt file we have src app css app.js app index.css index.js um, 
we also have like packets like JSON, JSON file, right? So these are files that were created automatically when we initialize our React package. So I didn't create the file manually. I didn't write the code manually. Okay, so it was automatically generated by um, the command line that we entered on, on the terminal previously. So yeah, guys, we're not going to use like um all files here so i'm just gonna delete like some of this file um can delete like files that we're not going to use but before uh doing so we're going to um test if this react file um actually works so you can click on terminal and then click on new terminal and then you can um try to test your um file so you can uh, type in npm start and then click enter and you can see react script start All right so here we go mm, it's automatically like opening on another tab right okay so it looks like our uh, react packets work and as you guys can see when we start our program it seems like um this is like what we see right it seems like uh, these packets work so you can close the tab and we can go back to our VS code, right? We can go back to our VS code. Um, so I'm gonna go back here and we're going to delete some of um, the files that we're not gonna use. So we're going to delete this tree, logo, report, web vitals, and set up test.js. We're not gonna use them, so I'm just gonna delete them. And we're also going to delete this app um, test.js we're not going to use them uh, we're not going to use it so we're just gonna delete it right so yeah guys I think that's it for this video I don't want the video to be very long just the intention of creating this video is just to guide you step by step on how to um, create and initialize your react packets and also like making sure uh, your react packets works um, so yeah I'm just gonna control C this I'm gonna stop it and I'm going to clear my terminal so it doesn't look messy all right guys I think that's it for this video I'll see you in the next video where we're going to do some modifications to our file we're going to create another folder and add a couple more files that we will need for this project so I'll see you guys there all right what's up folks welcome back to the course um, in this video we're going to um, add another folder here all right so we're going to add another folder and we're going to name it as module right module like this maybe i'm going to use lowercase um so something like this and then we're going to add like three more files uh inside this folder so the first one is going to be um news catalog like this uh dot js making sure it's um going to be javascript file um the second one it's going to be um well, I'm going to fix this first because uh, I forgot the S, so I'm going to rename this. It's supposed to be news catalog, not new catalog, right? So here we go. I'm going to create another file here. The name of the file is going to be news um, element um, dot js. That's the second one. And the third one is going to be um, news element. Uh, dot CSS all right so we're going to do like some styling for news catalog uh, using CSS don't worry if you're not really uh, uh, familiar with CSS I'm gonna guide you step by step so there is nothing you should worry about um, so these are three files that you need to create um, inside this folder called module all right um, and we're also going to install um, axios right so I'm gonna click terminal new terminal oh actually uh, the terminal is already here i just didn't realize it um you can um install it by typing this command line npm i or install that those are the same thing so i'm gonna go with install um axios like this all right so now it's installing uh, i don't think it's going to take too long um well actually actually no um it has been installed it only took us like three seconds i guess so yeah it was pretty good guys yeah i think that's it um yeah making sure you already added this uh module folder and these three files inside the module folders and also install and uh, anxious um using that command npx install anxious 
yeah guys i think that's all you need to do for this video uh in the next video we're going to start uh doing the actual work coding and start modifying some of these files i'll see you guys there what's up guys welcome back to the course in this video um we're going to continue building our news website so uh as you remember we've added a folder here called module and then we also created like three files here all right so the first thing that we need to do is to go to um, app.js here all right and as you can see up here we have import logo from uh, logo.spg remember from the previous video we actually deleted um, the logo file so we're just going to delete these two because we're not going to use it all right so make sure you delete that and save it and the second thing that you need to do is to go to um, index.js and as you can see here we have uh, this line import report websites and remember in the previous video we already deleted that file so we're just going to remove this two because um, that's not relevant in our project anymore and we're also going to delete this and report web vitals um, functions because we already delete the the file so if we still have this in this file we're going to see an error right because you're like calling functions that doesn't uh, actually exist anymore so I'm just gonna delete this and I'm gonna save it all right um, so here we go uh, make sure you go to problems and you shouldn't see any error here right okay so we're done with these two files index.js and app.js so Let's go to newscatalog.js. This is the first um, file that we're going to modify. Um, so let's start by importing React, all right? So remember, um, this package that we initialize is uh, React packets, all right? So we're just going to import React and we have comma here we're going to add like the property of react which which are use state and effects use effect right so use state comma use effect right so use effect um didn't spell it right here we go so i'm just gonna click on this this is like the first um, the first line and the second line is going to be importing like another file but that file is located in the same folder um, so we're going to import like this use element.js but um, since this file is also located um, inside module fold folder so we're not going to uh, specify like which folder right assuming like we are in the same folder right so I'm going to have import here um, New, the name of the file which is use element um, here we go use element like this um, from and it's going to be from quotations dot slash normally we need to specify the folder if the file is not located in the same folder but since it's, it's located in the same folder we're just going to like recall the name of the file which is news element right and the third one it's going to um, be axios so we're going to import axios to down here um, import axios uh, remember that in the last um, video we already um, installed in axios so we went to terminal and run a command that states like npm install axios well for those of you not really familiar what axios is well in react axios um, is commonly used to communicate with the back end system all right so that's what we're going to use um, in this project we're going to communicate with the back end right so make sure you save it first here um, so let's start um, we're going to initialize um, the news catalog so I'm just gonna add like a comment here it's kind of like a documentation to to tell you to help the readers know like what does this line of code do and stuff so make sure you have you know some documentations explaining about what um, what that block of code does stuff like that 
So we're going to be declaring declaring constant for uh, for the news catalog, right? So let me explain what's gonna happen here. Um, actually, from the API, there are like many di um, different news, right? As I mentioned previously, we're going to uh, get our uh, data, our news from news API, where they have like more than 80,000 um, sources. So there are a lot of data, obviously, and it's going to be um it's going to be like a list right so a uh, list so um it is a uh, constant variable we're going to kind of like initialize the list initialize the list of the news right so we're going to have cons like this cons um news catalog for the sake of simplicity we're just gonna name the um, we're just gonna name the variable um, as news catalog because this file is all about news catalog, right? It's going to be equal to. We're going to create an error functions uh, in JavaScript. Error function is kind of similar to other, you know, j normal JavaScript functions. So um, don't worry. Um, maybe you're not very used to it, but the more you do, the more you. Uh, error functions you create the more you're going to get used to it right so we're going to have open and close uh, bracket here and we're going to create another constants down here um, it's going to be the components of the API so if you go to our API here and you go to the documentations this is the documentation so let me tell you like how to get here so all you need to do is just click on the documentations and since there are like two endpoints for a news API, the first one is everything, the second one is top headlines. And for this project, we're going to use the everything um, endpoint. So make sure you click on a, um, everything and just scroll down a little bit, right? Until you get here, um, scroll down, keep scrolling down until you get here. Because uh, we want to display the articles on our news websites, um, so this is going to be like the um, the endpoint that we're going to use. I'm sorry, not the endpoint, but the response object that we're going to use um, in our code. So let me um, name this constant as articles, right? Just the same like what we see here uh, with S, obviously. Or maybe I'm just gonna copy and paste it from here because you know I don't want to misspell it. Um, here we go. Oops. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it here. Um, we have articles and we're also going to add um, another variable called set articles. That's to set the articles, all right? Um, maybe I'm just gonna have like upper case here um, to make it look a little bit better, I guess. Um, then we're going to utilize um, one of the components that we initialize up here and import React. So we're going to use um, use state. So that's what we're going to use here. Um, open and close parentheses, open and close bracket. And down here, we're going to utilize one of these two um, use effect, right? Notice that the color uh, changes, right? So after you recall that attribute, you call that component down here, um, the color changes into like light blue. So it's um, indications that you've you've used it, right? So we're going to have use effect and then create another arrow function. So open and close parentheses open and close parentheses again and we're going to have arrow like this uh open and close bracket all right um inside here we're going to have um another functions but we're going to define it as a variable constant so for constants um get articles like this right um we are going to have asynchronous functions so we are going to have as and c 
open and close parenthesis um, we're going to have arrow again open and close bracket here we go so um, now we're going to add like three more thing inside here so we're going to utilize our axios to communicate with the back end so we're going to have another constant here um, i'm going to name it as response res which is response uh, or maybe response just like this response and it's going to be equals to await um, remember that if you have uh, asynchronous functions you need to have await right um, and you're going to have axios here axios like this oops axios like this and you're going to have um, dot get right dot get and inside here it's going to be a string uh, and you need to go to your news API here um, the news API you can click on this um, then you can find your API key right here right this is your API key uh, so you can click on get started here and then uh, select JavaScript because that's the programming language that we use and so we're going to um, get the link here because there are two endpoints and the endpoint that we're going to use is the everything endpoint right so not the top headlines but the everything endpoint so just click on this um, so you can copy and paste this whole thing all right um, so just gonna copy and paste it so down here um, and remember that we actually need to remove um, the API key with our own API key make sure you remove this part like this API key part with your own API key otherwise not gonna work right so now I've been uh, replacing that with my own API key so then we're done with this all right so uh, the next part it's going to be what it's going to be um, recalling this variable called set articles because we want to set the articles we want to display it on our news website so set articles and notice that the color changes it means that we've uh, recall it down here um, so it's going to take one parameter and that's going to be um, like the object response like this response dot data because we want to get the data and the articles we kind of want to like specify it so if we go back to um, the documentations of news API uh, as you can see here um, so like articles um, this is inside the data right so we need to access the data first then go to article that's why we have like dot data dot articles and at the end uh, we also need to print it so I'm just gonna give a comment here I'm going to say uh, print the data down here and we're going to do like console.log console.log like this um, response right so that's what we're going to do and down here we're going to like recall the, the functions because um, this function get article if you don't recall it then <laughs> I mean it's not gonna work right you need to recall it down here so you're going to have get articles and open and close parentheses like this and we're going to have comma here close bracket this is for like the continuations of the list and down here we're going to have um, return right we're going to have return because we we need to make sure like what this function is going to return so we're going to have open here um, Um, we're going to start with div. Um, it's going to be like the HTML code, all right? It's going to be HTML code. So we're going to have div like this. Oops, I, I still need to um, understand why there is an error right here. Um, it seems like the identifier is expected. So I'm just gonna delete this first, all right? So, okay, so there's no problem here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, 
All right. Um, so I'm just gonna return this. And I'm going to open and close parentheses again here. And we're going to have diff like this. All right, we're going to have diff. And as if for, for those of you who don't like what div is in HTML code, when you start you know writing your HTML code, it always starts with div. Normally, as the opening, you have like div, and as the closing, you have like uh, slash div, right? So we're going to have articles. That's the uh, the object that we use, right? Articles like this dot map. Um, we're going to like utilize the functions. So article. Uh, we're going to have arrow functions here, um, and it's going to return. It's going to return um, the news element. However, we haven't created our news element yet, so we're going to keep this blank, right? Um, it's going to be like this news element. So I'm going to close it like this, all right? So for now, we're just going to leave it like this because we haven't created our um, use element file yet. I mean, we already created the file, but it's still blank. So uh, there is nothing you can put inside here, right? So I'm just going to save this first uh, for now. And we're going to leave this. Uh, rem remember, um, after um, creating our use element.js file, we're going back here and then we're going to add something to um, this HTML file because um, we know nothing what to add here because we haven't um, we haven't added anything to this file yet right folks um welcome back so we're going to continue building our news website and the last video we already modified this file news catalog.js so now um we're going to modify um news element.js as you can see it's still blank right so we're going to add some codes here so the very first thing that you need to do is to import um, this file, um, news element.css, because that's going to be the CSS file that we're going to use to style this um, news element.js. So uh, again, right now, um, it's still empty, it's still blank. Um, there's nothing here, right? We're just going to add, um, we're going to import it here um, so we don't forget it, all right? So we need to do it now. Um, so we're going to import um, news item.css like this. News And reason why um, we don't have we don't specify any um, folder here because we knew that use element.css is located in the same folder, so we all only need to do like dot slash and the name of the file, which is uh, news element.css, the one that we want to import here. And the second thing here uh, is to import React. <coughs> import React like this. Again, this is like React package, right? So in every file, you need to import React. We're going to create like a constant here called constant um, news element. Um, just to be consistent with the name of the file. So we're going to name it with the name of the, um, with the name of the file, which is news element. So we're also going to use that exact same name for this variable, for this um, functions, I'll say. So we're going to have um kind of like an object here so i'm going to have like open and close bracket um right here so we're going to have um open and close parentheses open and close bracket and we go to like news every documentations um as we can see here um we have title we have descriptions we have url and url to image because these are four components that want, we want to, to be displayed on our website. So we need to add these four uh, components um, inside this bracket, right? So we're going to have title, 
like this. We're also going to have descriptions, all right? We're also going to have URL. And the last thing is going to be URL to image, but make sure um, it has like upper keys, right? So you follow the um, rule. Uh, you need to be consistent with the letter, with the upper and lower keys, because JavaScript is um, sensitive, is a case sensitive language. So that's going to be the arrow here. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to be an um, arrow functions. And this function is going to return uh, at the ML code. So we have return here. Um, and again, as I explained in the previous um, section, when you write HTML code, you always need to um, open it with div and close it with slash div, right? So just um, write it down like this div. And we're going to uh, we're going to name it, uh, the class. So we're going to have like class name like this. And again, the name of the folder is news um, website because that's going to be like the name of this project. So we're going to name it like that. So news. Um, website like this uh, without space um, just to be consistent with the naming here um, and the second one we're going to have another div right so it's kind of like a subsections I'll say so we're going to have another div here um, here we go and then the name of the second div it's going to be what it's going to be um, news element right um the name of this file right just to be consistent with the naming um because if i use like different names then i might confuse you so yeah um make sure we're consistent with the naming and stuff and that's like the second div and we're going to create like another one down here. It's going to be image, right? So image IMG like this. Um, for IMG, we're going to have class name, right? So for the class name, uh, it's going to be uh, news image, right? And SRC, we're going to have our SRC, like the name of this folder. It's going to be equals to URL to image, right? URL to image, because that's one of the object. Um, as you can see here in the news API documentations, we have URL to image, and we're going to have alt, like the setting here, alt um, equals to same thing here, URL to image, and we're going to close it. Um, as usual in HTML language, you need to have like slash and close that like this, all right? Um, and the next one here, we're going to have H3. This is like header tree. Um, we're going to have HRave like this. Yep. Um, I think we have a space, so it doesn't collide. Um, we're going to set the HRave to like URL. That's one of the um, object that is listed here in the news API documentations which is the URL right here, the direct URL to the article. So like every single time the user of the website um, clicks on it, then he or she is going to be automatically directed to like the original um, sources, right? So that's how it works. And we're going to close it uh, at Shref URL. Um, we're going to close it like this. And we're going to add a title. Obviously, um, you will need the title, right? You will need the title. Um, so the user will know like, okay, so this is the title of news, right? Because if you don't have the title, then the user will not have any idea like what is this news all about. And obviously we need to close um, this with slash a like this. Oh, actually, we already did it, so I forget. Sorry about that. And um, at three, we already closed the header tree. And down here, um, we're also going to add something. We're going to add p. That's going to be like the uh, descriptions, right? So obviously, uh, before reading like the whole article, something is um. It's going to be better if we kind of like display the descriptions. So uh, at least there. 
uh, readers know like what is this news all about and just know like the general overview about the news article so we're going to add descriptions and obviously as you can see on the left side of my screen uh, description is one of the uh, object listed on the news API documentations this word descriptions or snippets from the article all right so it's kind of like the highlight and stuff so we're going to have like open and close uh, bracket here and we're going to have descriptions right so uh, notice that all colors have turned from like dark blue to like light blue um, it means it indicates that all four objects have been um, recalled down here right so now we have like close diff close the second diff and at the end we're going to explore it all right so if we don't explore it then our website is not going to work so export default and the name of the file uh, um, which is like this file it's going to be like news element right so yeah um we're done with this um I'm just gonna save it and i'll see you in the next um sections where we are going to add um add the email code to this use catalog uh if you remember like we uh told you that we're going to um return here because it's still empty um and we were not able to add anything here because we haven't created this file yet so make sure um we'll go back to this file and add something to this since we already um modified this file right so i'll see you um in the next one welcome back folks so we're going to continue building our uh, website use website to be more specific so remember that we created this news element.js and again as i told you over and over again we need to return to use uh, catalog.js because we still ha have um something to do here all right um so let's write the html code and as you can see it's still blank it's still empty uh so we're going to we're going to add the title here um so we're going to have title like this equals to article title and if you're wondering like where it's coming from well it's coming from here um it's coming from here news element.js um remember that we have like four objects title descriptions url and url to image these four are um from the api uh news api documentations so we're going to add the title first it's very important for us to like display the title right um so that's the first thing and the second one is going to be the descriptions this descriptions of the news articles that we want to do to to display so it's going to be like uh articles uh dot descriptions and notice that notice that um every single time we want to access whether it's a title or descriptions or maybe url we all we always need to access it from the articles because the article is kind of like the main um like the subsections and then we need to access the article first to be able to access the title the same thing with description we need to access the article first before um before accessing the descriptions so so as you can see here um this is a like the list of response object and you have like articles right here right the results of the request and the article itself has like uh, several different subsections down here um and four of them are title descriptions url and url to image so like four of these are located inside the article so in order to be able to access in order to, in order to be able to access um like for example like title you need to access the article first that's why you have like articles dot title and the same thing articles dot descriptions all right so we're going to continue and uh, the third one is going to be url right so we're going to access the url through the articles so we're going to have um we're going to have url like this url uh, it's going to be article just kind of the same thing like what we did previously descriptions not descriptions it's going to be url um article url that's it and the last one here is going to be url to image right um it's going to be um article like oops i uh, made a mistake unfortunately article like this dot um it's going to be url so image all right here we go that's it um 
I don't think it's necessary for us to have like um, use uh, element closer. I'm just gonna delete this. So instead, we're only going to have slash dot close like this, not dot slash close, right? So yeah, make sure to save it, right? Save it, because um, if you don't, then you potentially lose this file. You don't want it to happen, right? Um, yeah, I think that's it for for now. Uh, we're going to add, you know, some styling to newselement.css. Right now, it's still blank, and newselement.css is going to be um, the file for newselement.js. So we're going to do like some styling here on uh, newselement.css and if you remember that previously we already imported um, that file newselement.css on newselement.js file so yeah um i think that's all i'll see you in another video right what's up folks welcome back um now we're going to do some styling uh using css so just click on newselement.css and um, if you remember, we already imported that file to use element.js, so we don't need to do it again. And the first thing that we're going to style is the, the body, like the background, right? So it's going to be um, use website, because that's going to be the name of the file, right? Use website like this. Here we go. Um, we're going to justify content. Um, center because we want it to be in the center we, we don't know yet if it's going to look nice so again um, as I mentioned previously once we're done with this once we build this new website we're going to do testing right we are going to be conducting testing to see if it is comfortable to use if it's user friendly from the perspective of user so if there are like some things that need to be modified there is some things that need to be changed that, that need to be fixed Right, so we're just going to play around with the CSS styling. All right, um, the second one we're going to display um, flex like this. Um, all right, for those of you who don't know, like what display flex um, in CSS is used for, well, it's the property of um, CSS. To use like a flash book, right? Uh, probably it's kind of confusing at first, but when you see like the output, and uh, then you will get it like what it meant by flex, right? So for example, like you want to lay a collection of item out in one direction or another, and uh, because that's the case with um our news websites, we want to basically like lay the collections of news articles in one directions right so that's what we're trying to aim here um and the next thing it's going to be um the second one here um which is news element remember that we're actually just copying and pasting the the object um the class name here uh, first you have like news website which is this one and the second one is going to be news element right this is like the second class name um, we're going to have news um, element uh, I'm not sure probably we need to like um, make it like this so I'm gonna save it first all right um, and also make it something like this so save it here we go um for news element it's going to be like this news element um open and close bracket we're going to play around with the size of the news element we don't know yet if it's going to look great but um as soon as we are testing and seeing the output we'll understand like what things that need to be fixed so we're going to be back here again the CSS um, file to restyle it if uh, we're not satisfied with the output so the first one here we're going to have the padding um, maybe I'm gonna play around with 25 px not sure if it's going to look great I'm just like estimating like random number here and we want the border to be maybe like 
2px. I don't want it to be very thick, so I'm gonna go with 2px here and I want it to be solid. So that's the border. Um, what about the width? For the width, maybe I'm gonna go with um, 6, no, maybe, um, maybe 400px, right? And the margin bottom, all right, the margin bottom, um, I'm gonna go with 20px. Oops, actually, I forgot the margin top here. Margin top. Maybe I'm also gonna go with like 5 or maybe 10px. Again, not entirely sure if those look great, but we'll see, right? So the third one here, uh, which is like the last one, is like the third um, class, which is use image here. So I'm just gonna recall the name dot use image. Uh, like this um, image, right? We're just going to play around with the width. Maybe we're gonna go with like 300 px or maybe 500 px, right? 500 px, like this. All right, so now we're gonna save it, right? Uh, and also save another file that have has not been saved yet. All right, so cool. I'll see you in um, another section, uh, video sections where we're going to modify the app.js because we um, need to modify its HTML code. Uh, as you can see, these are like the original codes. So when we create our React packets, um, the system are the system uh, automatically generate as this file, right? So we haven't modified, we haven't touched this file yet. So we're going to do some modifications with this. Um, so I'll see you there. Right, welcome back. So we're going to continue building our this website. So remember, um, we've modified use catalog.js, um, use element.js. We also uh, did some styling. Um, with CSS here on use element.css and now um, it's the time for us to uh, modify app.js as you can see here these codes this line of codes are like the original codes um, originated from <clears throat> the react package that we create and install so remember that we um, open up our command prompt or maybe if you're on mac we open up our terminal and then type in like npx create react app so when we create the um react packets we got this uh line of codes right so these are automatically generated by um the system right so we were not the one that created this but we got this automatically when we initialize our react packets so we're just gonna like delete this and we're still going to use these functions though so we're gonna keep it um so the next one um we're going to connect we're going to connect use um catalog.js with app.js because we keep all these um use element at html file right here so we're going to connect it down here so let me um import the file from here so we're going to import maybe i'm going to do it up here so import use catalog use catalog like this from And this time, since uh, we're in a different folder, uh, remember the news catalog is inside the module folder, but because um, we're right now in app.js and this is not inside the module folder, so we need to specify the location. So we're going to have like dot and comp, uh, we're going to have like dot and module because um, that's the name of the folder. And uh, we're going to go with news catalog because that's going to be the file that we want to be imported, right? Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Um, so this function is going to return. So open and close parentheses like this. Um, we're going to write the HTML code as usual. When you write the HTML code, you need to um, start with div like this. 
type div right and inside the div you want to give the class name and you're going to name it as app this just want to be consistent with the naming um since the name of this file is app.js so uh, i don't really want to confuse you so we're just going to use like the exact same name here um so the class name is also going to be app right and inside here we're going to have um, news catalog so news catalog like this right and close right so i think we're done with the app.js so we're just gonna save it and we can go back to news catalog.js and there is um something missing here if you notice that the color of this variable um hasn't changed yet it should turn to like uh it should turn to like light yellow but right now it's still like dark yellow so it means that this variable hasn't been used yet so we're going to do the exact same thing like what we don't we've done here to export because uh, actually we forgot to do this and the website's not gonna work so we're just going to copy and paste the out um <clears throat> this element here um so gonna go back to news and i'm gonna export it and instead of news element um it's going to be um use catalog right so right here use catalog right cool so notice that the color turns to light yellow so it means the variable has been called has been used so great um so yeah we're done with these um we're going to be conducting testing in the next video so i'll see you there what's up guys welcome back to the course welcome to the tasting phase so the intentions of conducting testing is to make sure that the news website um, has worked the way it's supposed to because when you compile and there is no error it does not necessarily mean that your program works the way it's supposed to right in order to know you need to test it um <clears throat> so there are like four objectives that we want to test the first one here we want to make sure that the website has been fully integrated with news api the second um, objective is to know that the news website is capable of requesting news data from the api right so these two are kind of like related to each other um by knowing it's been fully integrated obviously um the website will have the capability of requesting um news data from api right and the third objective is to make sure that the news website is fully functioning and ready to be used and the last objective here um we're going to test from the perspective of user um to make sure the news website is easy to use and user friendly right so it has a um, good user interface and yeah um let's go to our visual studio code here uh there are like few corrections that need to be made um not corrections actually but like modifications all right so right here and use catalog.js as you can see um this is the link and remember like at the end of this link we already remove um the api key with our own api key make sure if you haven't done it make sure you do it now um because otherwise not gonna work so now as you can see this is my api key and as you can see here um since the api works like the endpoint that we are going to use is like everything so basically we need to replace this part um q equals um politics for example um so if we keep this when we compile the code when we uh, open it up on our browser we're going to see um news about politics right so you want this to be customized by the user right you want the user to have the ability to have the authority to change like um what's going to be the topic that they want to search right so i have like another solutions here i'm going to just remove this part and i'm going to inject um a string here so we're going to have something like this all right um uh, we don't know yet like what's going to be here so i'm going to create a variable called um topic so i'm just gonna have it down here so for um topic all right so i initialize the variable called topic and topic that's going to be an empty string like this and we're going to let the user to decide like what's going to be the topic so for instance you want um, news about politics so 
just type in politics like this and right here um you just inject the name of the variable which is topic right so like this topic that's it and you can save all right so now it's been saved um you can run the program by typing npm start like this and as you can see it's initializing and here we go just gonna maximize this browser right and we'll see what's going to be um, the output right just gonna refresh this once again all right so it's still waiting for the news API um, it might take a while I, I, I'm not sure yet probably it's due like my uh, internet connections does not very stable um, but like the last time I check it the last time I testing um, it only took me like a couple of seconds not even like less than five seconds so I was wondering like why it takes so long here just gonna open up my VS code here just in case there's any error here uh, apparently there's nothing here so I'm gonna go back to our VS code here All right, cool. So now, um, as you can see, um, we have news about politics, right? So I know it looks pretty basic, guys. Uh, it doesn't have like anything fancy, like uh, regular news, uh, news websites that you normally see. But these are, you know, news articles from many different sources, more than 80,000 sources, right? So you can keep scrolling down and it's, you can find like many different um, news uh, about politics and if you want to click it yes yeah, just click on the title all right so click on the title and then it will automatically direct you to it will automatically direct you to um, like the original page right so again apologize it might take a while okay so it's originated from CNN that's why when you click on it then you'll be directed to CNN um, official websites, right? So that's how it works. And maybe it looks kind of like wide here. Um, the background is kind of empty, nothing um, nothing crazy in the background. So you might want to do like some styling with the CSS and why don't we change the background color, right? So I was wondering that. Um, and as you can see here, I'm right now opening a website called Rapid Ta Tables. Don't worry, I'm also going to attach the link on your UDB resource uh, folder so don't worry about that so right here you can find like many different um, codes for CSS um, colors right so you can play around with the colors if you want to I'm just, just gonna close this tape first I'm also going to control C this to stop it from running right and I'm gonna clear the terminal all right so it doesn't look messy and let's go back to um, the VS code and click on your news element.css and we want to add background color for example right so background color um, and as you can see here you have like many different options when it comes to colors in CSS feel free to pick whichever color color that you like the most um, personally I'm a big fan of uh, light maybe like aqua or maybe light blue light sky blue yeah I'm gonna go with this I'm just gonna copy this hex code and I'm gonna paste it here, right? So right here. Okay, cool. Um, so why don't we save it? Why don't we save it? And let's rerun it again here. So I'm gonna run it. npm start. All right, so here we go. Mm. Okay, so now it's opening on the other tab and we'll see. Okay, it looks great, guys. Um, it looks uh, like light blue. Feel free to change the color um, to whatever color that you guys like. Uh, me personally, I'm a big fan of light blue, so I chose to go with light blue, right? So, yeah, and feel free to do like other improvements to the websites. Um, I think it's good to have um, like this news center here. Um, maybe you want to put it on the right or on the left. You can change the you can change the CSS styling so you can go to Visual Studio Code and go to your newselement.css 
and for the justify content um, right now it's in the center and then you can change it to the left or to the right or wherever right depending on your uh, personal preference but me personally uh i think it's good to have it on the center right and yeah feel free to play around with this um news image with justify content stuff for example if you feel like the image is too small you might want to um make the size a little bit bigger i guess but don't make it too big um or maybe if you see the border is too thick maybe you want to uh, change this from 2px to 1px right or get rid of this solid part um it's totally up to you it really depends on your on your personal preference right but me personally i'm pretty satisfied from i'm pretty satisfied with this um look and i think like from the perspective of user even though this is not perfect actually like far from perfect um but it's very comfortable to uh you know navigate through the websites here you can like scroll keep scrolling down keep scrolling down and see uh, you know many different um news about politics right for instance you want to um try like another topic we can do it so let's go back to our vs code here and then control c to stop it from running all right so control c like this and then clear your terminal uh, let's go back to news catalog maybe you want to change this from politics to maybe sport yeah sport maybe go with sports and i'm gonna save it and let's rerun it again here um so i'm gonna uh, type in npm start and click enter and then as you can see now it's initializing our website so um we'll see wait um Unfortunately, I accidentally closed the tab, so just gonna um, close this first, control C, and then rerun it again by typing npm start. Here we go, and we'll see. All right, so here we go. Uh, we're supposed to find news about sports, right? Since we already changed the topic from politics to sports, so that's what we are expecting to get. All right again it might take a while uh probably probably this due to my internet connections that's not very stable so uh, i really apologize for that issue guys all right so here we go um oh it's kind of weird um i didn't expect to get news about this pre these are pretty random oh actually these are uh sport related news as you can see here uh rethinking the sport industrial complex College swimmer says she was assaulted at event, opposing trans woman in women's sport, stuff like that. So these are, you know, um, news related to, to, to sport, right? Uh, what else? Base changing ropes, 2023 sweep serve water sports. All right, cool. So it seems like the news website is working pretty well. So I think we're done with the testing phase. Um, Feel free to do like as many improvements as you need and I will see you in the next um, sections where we're going to talk about uh, several different strategies to monetize your news websites, right? Of obviously, there are still many improvements could be done to these websites and, and, you know, it takes creativity and efforts to do it. So I bought the basic one and I leave it to you to develop like based on your own preference based on your um based on your creativity right so i'll see you there what's up folks welcome back to the course in this video we're going to talk several different um strategies that you can implement to monetize your news websites and based on my analysis there are like four uh main strategies that you can implement however i believe there are more than these four but these are like the most common ones so let's begin with the first one here is by displaying ads from Google AdSense, right? Um, this is like one of the most common um, thing that website owner normally do to you know, monetize their websites. So all you need to do is just to go to Google AdSense, Google AdSense like this, and click on this site, right? Um, you can earn money from website monetization all you need to do is just to register your websites there and then they're they're going to check um your monthly traffic like 
uh, is your traffic um, valid, right? Sometimes you, sometimes people are cheating, um, sending like bot traffics, and obviously Google AdSense don't want that to happen, right? Google AdSense want to make sure that um, the ads will be displayed on valid websites with valid and high quality traffic. So um, they're going to like check it first, and then if your website is valid if the traffic coming to your website is also valid if those are like high quality traffics coming to your website then obviously um you're going to be accepted to the adsense program right so um so every single time your visitor come into your website click on the ads um you're going to get paid right so they have like their cpc like cost per click so every single time someone click on your um someone click on the ads on your website you're, you're going to get paid this is just an example so i'm opening like cnn um official websites here as you can see there's an ad up here um from cutter airways and then every single the idea is like every single time like someone click on this um ad and then cnn is going to get paid right um so that's how it uh how it actually works and kind of the same thing too with the second options here um so for example like you are not really a big fan of google adsense or you might want to see um if there is any other alternative to google adsense well there are many other alternatives um you can display your banner ads you can display banner ads from tabula or and adstra on your websites and the the concept is kind of the same guys so every single time your visitor click on that banner ads then you're going to get paid by um, the ads provider, right? So let's go to tabula for instance. So tabula Let's go to tabula.com or maybe you want to go to Oddbrain Or even at stera, right at stera Yeah, these are like pretty much the same platforms guys um, for example like tabula, right? Um, you can register here as advertiser because your own websites generally speaking like the check they're going to do is going to be like less um strict compared to google adsense so your chance of getting accepted on tabula or Outbrain or aster are going to be way higher right um so kind of the same thing with Outbrain. you need to register as advertiser and the same thing with um Astera, right so once you got accepted, then they're going to add like adds the ML code that you can integrate to your um, website. So every single time like someone click on the banner ads, then you're going to get paid. And as you can see here, um, even like CNN, they have like their um, ads, right? Banner ads, for example, like what you see up here from Qatar Airways. And then if we scroll down a little bit, there's another banner ads down here um, coming from the same advertising source um, ad for uh, Qatar Airways. And yeah, that's that's um, just like one of many examples about banner ads. And the third one is true subscriptions based websites where your visitors will be charged to access premium features, right? So for instance, uh, you create your news websites and like 80% of um, news can be accessed by anyone for completely free. Uh, however, there are like some premium news, there are like some premium packages that can only be accessed by subscribers, right? So if your um, visitors, your user want to access like those packages, uh, then they are going to get charged. That's how you uh, monetize. That's the other way. That you can do to monetize uh, your news websites right um and the other one here is to promote your other brand products or service by displaying your affiliate link so you can create like um you know additional sections where you display like a couple different links um like those are affiliate links so every single time someone click on that link and make a purchase um, you're going to get commissions, right? It depends on the company's policy, for example, like 20%, 25%. So someone click on that link and then make the purchase through your affiliate link. Um, you're going to get maybe 20 or 25% commissions. So that's how it works. Uh, there are, those are like four different ways to monetize your user websites. Obviously, there are more than these four. 
Um, but personally, if you're asking me like which strategy that I, I would like to uh, implement if I had to choose one among these four, I'm going to go with um, the second one, displaying banner ads. A reason why, because it's, it's less strict um, compared to Google AdSense, meaning that it's going to be easier. I have like a better chance of getting accepted um, to Tabula or Oddbrain as an advertiser. And displaying ads on your news websites can actually be very powerful when it comes to like monetizing, right? You don't know like how many people come into your websites and then just play around with, uh, you know, the conservative estimations. Maybe like 1% of your visitors are interested and in going to click on your ads. And guess what? Like how, how much um, that you're going to generate from that alone, right? So obviously it's pretty... Um, good prospects to do and i think that's all you need to know about monetization strategies i'll see you in the next um sections we're going to sum up all things that we've learned and i'm also going to share a few um, key takeaways on how to how to be a better web developer um that's from the technical perspective and also i'm gonna share a couple of few um tips and tricks on how to um take your website to another level, right? Generate more traffic and turn this into like a full-time passive income online business. So I'll see you there. What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, we're going to summarize all things that we have learned so far. And I'm also going to share a few tips and tricks on how to um, take all skills and knowledge that you've learned to another level, right? So let's begin with the first one here. Uh, it's very important to you. <clears throat> pay very close attention to your API, right? So you need to make sure that you use a reliable API. It is extremely crucial to make sure that your website, um, in this case, or use website, um, relies upon a reliable API with valid data sources. Because if we are not really sure if we um, have like the right API, um, there is like lots of risks coming. Uh, for example, if you got um, a hoax, right? Or maybe like a fake news or news that are not accurate. And obviously, as soon as your visitors, as soon as your um, users um, realize that the news displayed on your websites are not accurate, they're, they're not going to trust you anymore, right? So you don't want to lose um, trust from them. That's why it's very important for you to make sure that the data, the news that will be displayed on your site, those are reliable um, news. Those are those are um, accurate news, right? So that's the very first thing that uh, you will need to very uh, you need to pay very close attention to reliable API. And the second one here. Testing is important, guys, all right? So only because you compile it and you see there is no error, it does not necessarily mean that your program, your news uh, website is going to work the way it's supposed to. So it's very important to test um, using multiple different scenarios, right? Um, so remember like what we did in the testing phase. So uh, initially, uh, for like first testing, we use uh, politic as the topic. So we run run it and then we see, okay, our, um, all news are related to politics and uh, for the second testing, uh, we change um, the topic from politics to sport and then I type in like NPM start and then rerun it again and you see like all news are related to sport. So make sure um, you test with multiple different scenarios to make sure that your uh, news website or whatever project that you're working on work the way it's supposed to. Um, besides um, like the functions, besides... Um, your website works the way it's supposed to. Um, you also need to make sure that it is comfortable um, to the users, right? Which is what we're going to talk about in um, section four. All right, so that's very important, guys. Um, testing is everything when it comes to like web development. Um, don't even think about um, <clears throat> purchasing domain and Re releasing your website for public to use before conducting testing with multiple different scenarios, right? That's like the very first thing that you need to do after um, 
after building your websites. So that's the second one. That, let's talk about the third one here, generate traffic, right? So when the, the, once the, depths, the website is deployed, the first thing that you need to do is to think how to generate um, as many traffic as possible before even thinking about monetization, all right? So lots of people thinking about, hey, how are you monetize this? Well, think about this. If you don't have any traffic or you have very low, um, low traffic with low quality, obviously, um, when you you sign up to uh, platforms like Tabula or Google AdSense, so uh, they can display their ads on your websites, dude, like you're not going to get any click, right? So like, what's the point of displaying ads on your website if you knew that you're not going to get any click, if you knew that there's no visitor coming to your website? So like the very first thing is to forget about monetization, forget about how to monetize your website. The very first thing, once your uh, website has been deployed, um, you need to, you need to have the strategies to generate more traffic. Maybe you want to promote your website on other social media like Facebook or Twitter, or Instagram, or maybe YouTube, or perhaps you might want to, um, pay like social media influencer to mention, uh, the name of your websites on their posts. And obviously you can attract, um, uh, more potential audience or, um, <clears throat> more potential uh, visitors come into your websites, right? Um, so those are like few strategies that you can implement to generate more traffic. But personally, if you are asking me that questions like, Hey Chris, how to generate more traffic to your website? Well, it takes time. It takes process. Um, you're not going to get like 1 million traffic overnight. It's just not possible and very unrealistic. So uh, yeah, be patient guys, be patient. It will take um, a while. It might take a couple of months or even years to get um, traffic. But as long as you're consistent with your efforts, uh, trying to attract more and more people coming to your website, visiting your websites, maybe you can promote your websites on social media, or maybe you can also um, play around with the SEO, like searching engine optimization um, method, right? So you choose like the right keyword for your um, your title and stuff like that. So in the searching engine in Google searching engine or whatever searching engine is being used, um, your website is going to appear in the first or second row, right? So it's going to be easy for people to find your websites in the searching engine. So for example, like they type in, uh, like a specific keyword, um, then if you have like a strong keyword, you have like a strong, uh, you implement like the good, um, searching engine optimization strategies, then obviously um, your website is going to appear in the first or second or maybe third row, which means that your website is easy to be found by the users, right? So uh, by doing that alone, uh, you're going to be able to generate more traffic, right? Without promoting um, your website on social media. So I think like the first, like the very first um, thing that you need to be concentrating on is to play around with the SEO, making sure that you use the right keyword. Um, and second, you can um, complement your efforts by promoting your um, websites on social media, right? So that's the third one here. Let's talk about the fourth one, okay? So user experience. You can get the help from your friends or family members, that's your website, making sure it's easy to navigate from the standpoint of user, not developer. So like the most common mistake that web developer, including myself, um, experience, this is based on my personal experience, right? Because if you're a web developer, if you're like software developer, you're the one that built these websites, it's kind of hard, it's kind of difficult for you to see if there is any room for improvement because you're the one that created this website. However, um, you get ask other people, maybe your uh, friends or your family members to, to um, test the website, right? To test the website and ask their opinions, right? Ask their suggestions, recommendations and what things that could be improved or there might be some things that need to be removed or, you know, other things that could be done to improve user experience in general. So sometimes, um, Lots of developers, uh, web developers uh, conducting testing by yourself and they see, like, okay, there's no problem at all. That's from your perspective as a web developer. However, it's very important to put yourself, to position yourself in the, sh in the shoes of 
uh, user in the sense of visitors. Therefore, um, it's extremely essential to to just imagine yourself like um, someone who know nothing about web development and you just want to you know play around with this website you just want to read news and from that simple perspective alone you can think and analyze if there are um, features that need to be added for example or there are features that need to be removed there are um, features that need to be fixed so that's how I think about it when it comes to um, enhancing um, user experience and if you have budget to do it and if this is like a very big project you can register to a website like uh, test my UI I'm sorry try to my try my UI dot com or maybe user testing so let me show you uh, the website so like this user testing and try my UI like this so these are websites where you can um, register your um, news website here right and then you're going to pay people to test your websites and maybe you're going to pay them like ten dollars or fifteen dollars I'm not really sure about the exact amount that you need to pay uh, this is like just another alternative to user testing so you're going to you're going to get the opinion from the tester right uh, about things that could be done to improve to be improving your websites things that could be done to um, enhance user experience on your website and stuff so yeah if you have budget guys you might want to consider to um, list your website here and then hear uh, other people's opinion other uh, web tester opinions about your site uh, maybe you want to get some insights from outsider perspective on things that could be done to improve your website um, user interface to make sure the user are comfortable you know navigating through your website so yeah guys I think that's it um, for the conclusion and summary I'm gonna move to another slide here all right so this is actually the last video guys all right um, I'm so proud of you for getting this far congratulations for completing the course um, congratulations for taking actions now you're at least a step closer to your goal of not only um, being a web developer being able to create your own websites but also like owning your own websites and even better to turn this um, website into like full-time passive income business right so yeah um, this is the last video guys uh, i wish you all the best right i wish you all the best nothing but the best in whatever goals that you do, you want to achieve in the future and i really hope to see you again in the next um course i'm planning to create uh, another course hopefully like by the end of this week so yeah um so excited and once again guys thank you so much it's been an honor and uh my pleasure to be your instructor here on udemy and Obviously, you'll do nothing but the best, guys.